Welcome to Lighting the Way Today, a place where we discuss how to connect God's Word with topics relevant to everyday life. We hope this conversation encourages, enlightens, and inspires you. Enjoy this episode. Hello, and welcome to Lighting the Way Today. I'm Hunter Mullins. In today's episode, we get to hear a conversation between Mr. Edgar Mendoza and Reverend Dr. Chandler Green on where evil comes from. To a lot of people who are in the Christian world, they already have an understanding more or less of where evil does come from. But for those who are still trying to figure out that question, maybe this episode can help shed some light on that answer. So I hope you enjoy this episode. My name is Edgar Mendoza, and here with me today is the Reverend Dr. Chandler Green. Oh, wow. Full Chan- titles. Yeah, we got to have him in there. <laughs> um, Chandler is an ordained minister, and he's also a licensed pharmacist. So thank you, Chandler, for joining us today. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. And we are going to talk about evil mm. and where does evil come from. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think about when I was about four or five years old, and I remember there was a commercial for a scary movie that came on the, the TV. And, you know, at that time we had like a really old RCA with a wooden casing on it. And <laughs> Those many, many years ago. <laughs> very, yeah, very much so. Um, but I, I say that because it, it even made the experience even that much more scary because the the quality of the, you know, it was not 4K. So there was a grittiness to the way that it looked. And um, it was a movie about a a poltergeist. And so I was freaked out. And I remember my mom was outside saying goodbye to a family friend who had come to visit. And she saw me and she was wondering what happened. And I had such a hard time explaining to her why I was so scared Mm. Um, because I was so scared and I was so out of breath um, running to her. So as I look back, I, I have this connection of um, evil and, and fear. Uh, when I think of evil, I think of fear. Mm-hmm. And I was wanting to ask you, what was the first time you became aware of evil or the existence of evil? Yeah, I think uh, uh, one vivid one that sticks out for me is also uh, one that happened, you know, through entertainment. It was a, a television show. I was spending the night at a friend's house. I must have been uh, ten or eleven years old, and um, was spending the night at a house, his house, and he had HBO, oh, nice. and so we watched Tales from the Crypt. Wow! And if you remember that old show with the, the Crypt Keeper, that little creepy puppet guy. You know, looking yeah. back now, it's like that's a stupid little puppet, but. You know, at 10 years old, it, it freaked me out. And um, I remember I was spending the night at his house and I had to I leave. I had to call my mom. She had to come get me. Uh, I had to go home. I remember just sleeping in her bed, you know, the whole night. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's interesting that uh, television is kind of a, you know, similar bond there. But that that's one that sticks out that really uh, affected me. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because um, I think about what a powerful force TV movies are, yeah. Um, and I think about you know you were ten, I was you know four or five. So those are those formative years that when you experience something like that, it it really, at least you know in my mind, really sears that memory in, um, which could lead later down uh, the road of trying to unlearn some of these yeah. things. Yeah. So where does evil come from? Does it come from the television? <laughs> 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 it can be. I guess it can be used as. as well, yeah, you, you to... see. Yeah, I think you see how powerful uh, entertainment's television is as a as a vehicle to teach, right. uh, either good or bad. You right. know, but the two that stand out in our minds right now are you know two bad ones. Right, and having that um, sort of that mass media uh, to be able to use as a way to spread you know information or misinformation um and in a way it can really affect uh, many people not just kids but anybody who's uh, consuming um, or eating up uh, the different types of things yeah so you know that could cause some confusion on 
Uh, where does Evo come from? Sure, because if you're getting, if that's your standard of reference is movies and TV, right. I mean, good Lord, you know, who knows what kind of ideas can they can pop up or come up with. So, right. yeah, I think it, uh, and our kids are spending so much time on their phones. Adults are spending so much time on their phones and media. And, you know, right. we consume media now at a, at a, as an astonishing rate. Mm -hmm. So if that, yeah, if that's our center for reference, it's if that's what we base our beliefs upon, right. then yeah, who's making those movies? Who's <laughs> who's put those TV shows on there? Right. Because if that's all you have, then that's all you'll really know. Right. Unless you come across um, some other source, something of, else, uh, knowledge. But is is there a clear instance or uh, incident when you yourself experienced? Uh, or observe evil for yourself? Uh, like personally in my life, yeah, there was, um, it was a, a few years after this, I must have been uh, probably 11 or 12 years old at this point. Uh, and it was the first time I really experienced a death of a, of a close, um, you know, friend. Uh, it was uh, a housemate. They, uh, her, the husband and the wife lived with us and our family in the same house. So we shared the house. We were very close with them and they were pregnant and expecting a baby. And so we were all excited about the addition, of, you know, to the house and uh, some complications happened and circumstances kind of unraveled and uh, the wife ended up dying in childbirth. The child survived, but the wife did not. So, uh, yeah, that was the first time, you know, because at that point in my life, I hadn't had really a grandmother or grandfather fall asleep. Um, and this, it was so unexpected, you know, because she was young and. Um, so yeah, I remember that one really rocking my world and, um, kind of up, you know, up close and personal and, um, you just feel the, the sting of death mm -hmm. and yeah, that, that, that was a, that one kind of changed my outlook and matured me, I guess, in a, in a way. What, what did you, what did you do to sort of, uh, or did you do anything to try and move forward from that or overcome that yeah. experience? Yeah. Well, you know, I have the wonderful benefit of having been raised in the Word, raised with a, a very clear understanding of the Scripture and how God works and how, you know, life works uh, from a young age. Um, uh, so I had my parents there to help me the whole time. So they, they took care of us and uh, told us the truth of, you know, what the Word of God says, that uh, death is an enemy, uh, that the the adversary, Lucifer, the devil is the one that has the power of death. And that upon Jesus Christ's return, uh, you know, we will see those who were born again, we'll see him again. We'll be with them for all eternity. So uh, in that sense, the, the Bible refers to death as sleep. Because it is kind of like that, you know, where you, you don't see the person anymore. They're not conscious anymore. And then, and then but at one point they will be. Uh, so those were the things that I remember being brought back to. And, you know, at the time it still stings. Death is a sting. It, it doesn't take the sting of that away. But I think the truth, uh, you know, brings real comfort. The truth of God's word can bring real comfort. And it did. Right. Especially at that age, mm -hmm. um, to go through something like that. So young, I'm sure that really helped to have your parents sort of give you that, um, that truth yeah so that you can continue to move forward yeah um i know i didn't really have that um so i, I guess i was one of the right. people that uh consumed a lot of entertainment <laughs> you're turning to tv for all your answers huh what is the movie today <laughs> well i mean we did we did go to church uh but we didn't really talk about where does evil come from yeah. honestly like we didn't get into that so much in, in our church um, so I guess, you know, why do you, why do you think that is? I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. Um, we sort of just focused on specific parts of the Bible, but, um, it really wasn't focused on, you know, sort of those deeper topics that, mm -hmm. you know, that it sounds like your, your parents had to, to share with you. And so I was sort of left to kind of figure things out. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe it was movies and, and TV that I, uh, you know, learned a lot from. Yeah. Um, or friends. and <laughs> Yeah, or friends. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Um, but one of the things uh, I think about, especially when it comes to entertainment, is you see so many times that um, in a movie, 
There are forces of darkness, you know, represented by some villain. Mm -hmm. And then there are forces of good, and you see that through the hero. And oftentimes that, you know, we follow this journey with the hero to defeat, you know, the bad guy or the bad guys. And thinking about that storyline in the context of the Bible, it's not really a new idea. It's it's actually an old real life <laughs> storyline yeah. since you know Adam and Eve fell in the garden. So when the idea of uh, you know, people may attribute evil things to God or consider destructive events as an act of God, do you think that's because evil is supernatural and and God is also supernatural? So there can be some confusion as to like which force caused this bad thing to happen yeah yeah i think that's definitely a big part of it is that people have such a vague understanding of the spiritual realm you know it's just kind of this nebulous thing yeah. uh, that they hardly know anything about no specific so when something happens it's like well well that had to be god you know uh, so because I don't know anything other than God and, and no one's ever taught me about the devil or that the devil can do things or can't do things. So, yeah, I think it I think it's just a, a, a sign of general ignorance in spiritual matters, <laughs> which God does not want. Right. I mean, First Corinthians 12, 1, I believe that, I, that God does not want us to be ignorant of spiritual matters. He wants us to know. Right. And um, but how do you know if you haven't been taught? And again, what, what what is your standard of reference from which you've been taught? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think I think that's it. People just don't know what's going on. So it's easy to say, well, God did that. God did that. God does everything because mm -hmm. I don't know anything else. Yeah. And it, it makes me think about um, when bad things happen. I know for me, like I said, because I didn't really have knowledge, I did, you know, I, being in high school when bad things happened. I would just think that God was punishing me, mm -hmm. like that this was God at the cause of it and that I had done something bad, mm -hmm. which, you know, I wouldn't even know what that was. I was like, <laughs> but you did something. I must have done something have. bad yeah. because God is now punishing me with this health yeah. thing. Or I mean, that's a very logical conclusion to come to, mm -hmm. I think, uh, if, if you haven't been taught, you know, the deeper spiritual matters. I think it's very logical to think that right especially because you know as humans we're not perfect so there's going to be something that i don't do yeah right or that i i don't handle correctly so then it's to think well i didn't do that well so now exactly i'm going to pay the price right the the yin and the yang and the the payment the karma you know right the karma. yeah yeah so um there are people i've met who uh, they don't think much about the devil um, they don't put too much focus or, or weight on the devil as being a cause mm -hmm. of, of hardship um, on people's lives. And um, some people don't even think he exists. Mm -hmm. So from what we you know, see in the Bible, does the, the, does the devil generally operate in secrecy or deception? I, I think definitely. I think you we can uh, see that in real life and what we experience, and I think we can certainly see it uh, in the scripture. I think um, one way I've heard it described is the secret to his success is the secrecy of his moves. So a big part of why he is, is successful doing what he does is because people have no idea that he's doing that. Mm -hmm. If they did, they would say, no, I'm not going to allow that. So it, the secrecy, the deception, uh, he's called the thief. He's called the serpent in the scriptures. These are words that imply, you know, waiting in the grass and doing things under the cover of darkness, not, not up front, not visible. Right. Um, so I, I think that is a, a very apt description of him. You know, in, in Genesis, that's, you know, everybody knows that story, Adam and Eve and the the apple and the serpent, you know, the snake. And that that's obviously a figurative reference to his subtlety. He's very subtle. Uh, he's good at what he does, and he's good at getting people to think that he's not doing anything. <laughs> right. um, so another uh, scriptural instance that comes to mind is Job, the book of Job. A lot of people are familiar with that, where Job's life was great. And then here comes the adversary, the devil to ruin the day. You know, let's see how much... He, 
he really loves God after we take everything away from him. And so the adversary attacks. Uh, and Job holds fast his integrity through that whole thing. But one of the lines that he says is, oh, that my adversary had written a book. So, you know, you can hear his heart's cry of like, man, I know something's going on. I'm not sure quite what it is. Uh, I really wish I could, <laughs> you know, read his playbook. Right. Um, so it's like the, that general awareness of something, but not the specifics of it. And really, we don't see the adversary being exposed uh, to any real degree until the, the life of Jesus Christ. The ministry and life of Jesus Christ is set in direct opposition. You know, John 10, 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, kill, and destroy, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So he, he, you see this very clear um, distinction between the two spiritual realms, and Jesus Christ really came to make a lot of that known. Right. Um, so, yeah, um, to answer your question, I, I think he is very good at getting people to not see his move. Uh, again, if they did, they, you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't, he wouldn't be so successful. I think of the Wizard of Oz, you know, the, the, the wizard is this, this grand thing, right? This big head with the flames and, you know, law. And uh, then he's like, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. It's like right. the adversary will, will use things in uh, other people, uh, situations, the environment, natural disasters, which they call acts of God. These are all things that people get focused on and they just see it for what it is. But but there's a man behind the curtain pulling levers and talking into microphones and you know there there is a there's an order to the chaos. And um, he's pulling the strings, but again he, he's really good at people getting people not to look over there. Right. And let's take a moment to to talk about that guy pulling the strings. <laughs> who who is Lucifer, I, you know, is he the same as Satan? Is he the same as the devil? Is it all the same? Yeah, I mean, to really get down to the brass tacks, where does evil come from? Lucifer is the answer to that question. It's a one-word answer. And Lucifer uh, was one of the first uh, three archangels that God made. He had uh, Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer, and he's called the bright morning star, um, so he was, he was second in command essentially to God, uh, had so much power because God had given it to him and God created him. So, uh, but God also made this thing called free will and it's such a powerful principle, uh, and, uh, you know, almost untouchable thing in God's word that he even, he even gave it to the angels. The archangels had the opportunity to, to follow or to disobey. They had free will. They're not, uh, you know, robots or pre-programmed or whatever. So Lucifer chose to rebel. And again, we can read all this in the scripture, but he wanted to be like the Most High. He wanted to ascend uh, and be the star God. So um, he rebelled. He chose to do that. A God being a just God had to, you know, kick him out and get him out. And then here we are. Uh, so he took a third of the angels with him. Um, and that is what he now uses for his forces of evil. Uh, just like God has two archangels left and two thirds of the angels roughly, uh, left it, you know, for good. So, uh, yeah, you talked about that epic struggle, struggle of good versus evil. Well, it, it even predates Genesis. <laughs> it goes back to the very beginning, uh, you know, before God even made Adam and Eve. Uh, we see that that's where evil really comes from. And so uh, the adversary, uh, the devil, knows his end, because uh, we can also read that in the scripture, that evil will one day come to an end. There will be a time where there will be no evil, no more pain, no more suffering. And uh, so he knows that. So I think he's just trying to get his licks in while he can. Uh, but uh, again, I think that the more that we... Uh, trust God's word as our standard of truth. I think that's really what it boils down to. What do you trust for your standard of truth? If you trust God's word, then you will understand where evil comes from. You'll understand what the ultimate beginning and end of it is. Uh, and that knowledge is power. It really is power that gives us strength to stand against it in our day and time. So it's really important then to be able to distinguish between the things of God and the things of the devil. Because when things come into your life, 
And to be able to have that ability to say, okay, this is, or is this from God or is this not from God? Because it may look good, it may seem good, mm -hmm. but I guess it depends on, you know, what your definition of good is, good, yeah. the context of that life circumstance. Sure. And I think, you know, the more you experience and the more training you develop in a category of life, you get very good at discerning what is good. And we understand that in the physical realm. You, know, you have people whose whole jobs is to, this is good. This is good coffee. Buy that coffee. <laughs> uh, what about the spiritual realm? If you acknowledge that the spiritual realm exists, well, then we can develop our discernment of spiritual matters to that degree. Uh, it's just dependent on where we choose to, to go for that training. Now, um, because, you know, God, God is uh, good all the time, you know, why is it that a, a God who's so good would allow evil to exist in our day and time? Well, that's a great question. That's, that's the million dollar question. That's why people are tuned into this podcast <laughs> right now, aren't they? Uh, well, I'm glad you said it out loud. God is good all the time, right? That has to be our starting point. That is what God's word says. Uh, so how do we reconcile that statement with the pain and suffering that we see? And I think that's probably at the core of so many people's heart desire, you know, to understand that question. Um, cause I think, I think a lot of people want to love God but this may be the, the thing that's holding them back from like truly giving their heart to God. How can you love a God that allows, you know, death and destruction and all, how, how could you love a God that does? Or if that's an act of God, right. So I, I think this, you know, this is really at the core issue of spirituality. Um, but again, we accept that the scripture is true when it says God is good all the time. So, uh, you have to accept it. I think if you believe in God, you have to believe in the devil. And so again, the secrecy of his moves is, is such a key to his success. And so many people don't believe that there is a devil. So if you only believe there's a God and no devil, then all the bad's coming from God. So I think that is really key in people's understanding is knowing that if God is good always, then evil must come from some other source. I think that's a very logical path to follow. Uh, so if it must come from some other source other than God, then where's it coming from? And and the Bible tells us it's coming from the devil. That's really interesting too, because I, I've been thinking about this, that we're so conditioned to ask, you know, why do bad things happen? But I don't really hear people ask the question, you know, why do good things happen? <laughs> yeah. To your point about, you know, if there's Rod and he's good, then there must be... Why does he only take credit for the bad? <laughs> Why can't he get credit for the good? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so that uh, I think that's kind of the starting point to answer this question. Why, you know, why does all this evil, why is it allowed to exist? Uh, number one, there is a devil. So that's where it's coming from. And then number two is that free will that like we talked about. God gives us the choice, his way or the other way. Uh, and he gives us the choice. So when people choose to go uh, a, another route than what he's established, live life in another way than, than he's designed it for, negative consequences will ensue. If, if there's a brick wall right in front of you and you choose to smash into that brick wall, you choose to run full speed into that brick wall, is it the brick wall's fault or is that your fault? <laughs> right. Right? It's like, so that's, uh, you know, a very simplified version of why evil happens it we are all um in charge of our own believing we are all in control of our own vessel and the choices that we make day by day uh, have a huge effect whether or not we walk in the light or we are exposed to the darkness right and it is comforting to know that you know god is good all the time so even when we're experiencing something bad we know that we can go to a God that only wants us to experience good. Exactly. And to know that, you know, there's still two thirds of the angel <laughs> yeah. chosen to be yeah. on God's side and not on the devil's yeah. team. And, and the truths of God's word teach us how to have power to overcome in daily living, to overcome the adversary. So those things don't have to happen to us in this life. And then again, they show us the future of, you know, a time where this evil will no longer be.
Wow. Well, thank you so much, Chandler, for taking us yeah. out to Thanks for having me and talk about uh, the dark side and uh, where evil comes from. I didn't do one Star Wars record. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself. That's well, I guess I just, just did one right there. So, yeah, but at least it was at the end. <laughs> but uh, we're looking forward to um, learning more about how to overcome evil in the next part of this episode. But um, thanks again for the time, Chandler. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Lighting the Way Today. My thanks to Edgar Mendoza and Chandler Green for that inspiring conversation on where evil comes from. For what's next, let's kick it on over to Chris Jones to give us an insight. We let God's word shine in our life. He lights the path. What a show. That was God's word and conversation. Nothing but the truth. A podcast backed up by biblical proof. And the show keeps rolling. Can't miss the next edition. What's happening next? Turn it up and take a listen. And O'Brien, in the past you've mentioned there's a, there is a difference between being nice and kind. <laughs> uh, we wanted to see if you can talk more about what is the difference between being nice and being kind. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, kindness is an attribute of the love of God, or it's one of the ways the love of God is described in 1 Corinthians 13. Love is kind. Um, kindness is powerful. Kindness can change people. And it's because it's in line with God's purpose. So therefore, from going back to our definition, right. it would be of the good mm-hmm. when it comes to a biblical perspective. Thanks for listening to Lighting the Way today. Join us next time as we discuss biblical topics, letting the Word of God light our way in life.